This lesson deals with a design example using the voltage divider rule. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 2 starting on page 51. Suppose that we want to design an interface circuit to connect up to 50 ohms to produce 9 volts when we hook up a 12 volt source with a 10 ohm series resistance. What would happen if we connected this directly? We'd have a voltage divider of 50 ohms over 50 plus 10 times 12. That turns out to be 10 volts, so obviously that won't work. In some designs, it might be handy to look at the equations that are involved with the thing we're trying to accomplish. In the voltage divider of 50 over 50 plus 10 times 12, we could lower the value here, in other words, it was 10 volts with nothing connected, by increasing the denominator. So let's try that. And then we can analyze the circuit, see if it works. Okay, let's call that resistance R sub X. So now our voltage divider is 50 ohms over 50 plus 10 plus R sub X. We could take this, cross multiply that, be 60 plus R sub X times nine, and that would equal 50 times 12. Divide through by the nine, subtract the 60, and R sub X is 6.66 ohms. Now another way to think about that would be to try to lower the value of the 50 ohms. Remember the 50 ohms appears in the numerator and the denominator. So to put something in parallel with it, I can bring this down, but also bring this down, but we are adding something to it. So it's possible this may not work. So let's take a look and see if it's possible. Okay, let's divide by the nine. Let's bring this on the other side of the equation. This turns out to be 1.33 times R equivalent. And this again would be some resistance in parallel with the 50 ohms. Bring this on this side of the equation and I've got 0.33 times R equivalent is equal to 10 divided by the 0.33. So I need 30 ohms for the parallel combination. Now, is it possible to put something in parallel with 50 and get 30? Well, the answer is yes. Remember in our parallel combinations, we said that the parallel combination is smaller than the smallest resistor that you're putting in parallel. We also had a kind of a handy formula on page 47 of this chapter, saying that if we knew the equivalent resistance and we wanted to pick one of the two resistances, that it was equal to the product over the difference. So let's try that. So 50 ohms times the 30 I want over the 50 minus the 30 is 75. So now we've got two possible designs, putting a series resistance of 6.66 in series with the 10, or putting a 75 ohm resistance in parallel with the 50. Now which design is better? Since both circuits produce the same result, then they're both acceptable. Now, if we introduce some other criteria, such as power consumption, cost, then one circuit might be better than another. Let's use the power consumption, see how these two circuits perform if we look at how much power is generated by the battery and then consumed by the circuit. The one that consumes less power will have a much longer battery life. In our first circuit, we had 6.66 added in series with our 10 ohms. So the equivalent resistance seen looking in here is the sum of 10, 6.667 plus 50. And that's 66.667. So take V squared over R, and you get 2.16 watts. So this battery is generating 2.16 watts, and this whole circuit is consuming 2.16 watts. The second design, the parallel combination here of the 75 and the 50 we saw was equal to 30 ohms, I think that's why we picked it, plus now adding the 10 in series gives us 40. It's 12 squared divided by 40, 3.6 watts. So this battery generates 3.6 watts and this circuit consumes 3.6 watts. They both produce the same nine volts out, but one is taking a lot more power than the other one is. So if we're concerned about the life of a battery, then this first design is better than the second one. This is the design using the voltage divider rule.